Do you want to flick objects or characters with a mouse or a finger in your Godot game? I'll show you that and some neat tricks along the way. Let's get started. My game, Flick, uses the flick mechanic as the main driving force for gameplay. I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoy working on this game. For more information on Flick, check out the website link in the description. Thank you. This video assumes you already have Godot 4 downloaded and are at least familiar with the interface. I have some video suggestions in the description if you're new and want to first get started. Before we dive into Godot, let's go over how the flick works on a surface level. Have you ever tried to scroll really fast on a mobile device. That's the kind of motion we're trying to capture. The flick motion consists of three main events, the touch, the drag, and the release. When the object is first touched, we will set a flag to indicate that the flick motion has started. The drag will take place between the initial touch and the release of the mouse or finger. We don't have any necessary logic to add here, but I'll show you placeholder code where you could add something if you choose. Once released, we will compute the angle between the object and the position where the mouse or finger was released, and then apply a force to send the object flying. We will also unset the flag so that we can repeat this motion later. Now that we understand the problem and our approach to the problem, let's implement it. If you prefer to follow along with sample code, you can use a sample project I have linked in the description. Starting with the new Godot project, I first made some generic walls and floors for our flickable object to collide with. I started with a stack body 2D, then created a sprite 2D child node. Here's a neat trick for prototyping. If you want to make a placeholder sprite, you can create a gradient texture 1D and delete the white portion of the gradient to make it just black. I then added a rectangular collision shape 2D and match the size of the sprite. Lastly, I made sure to set the collision layer to 2 and the mask to 1. In this case, the collision layer represents what layers the walls and floors are on, and the mask represents what the walls and floors can collide with. Then I repeated these steps for the rest of the walls. Next, we'll create a new character body 2D scene for the flickable object. The character body 2D has logic to handle motion, so all we'll need to do is set its velocity through code later. I added a sprite 2D using the default Godot icon because it's required for prototypes. I added a collision polygon 2D using the create collision polygon 2D sibling menu option. I also made sure to set the collision layer to 1 and the mask to 2 so that the object can collide with the walls and the floor. I then added the new character scene to the main scene. Now it's time to code. I attached a script to the character scene. With the boilerplate code, I removed the keyboard input logic as it's not relevant for this tutorial. If you don't see the same boilerplate code, feel free to reference the sample project. To account for the touch logic, I added an input function. First, I needed to make sure the input event was a mouse click so I use this code. If you're making a mobile game, the left mouse click works the same way as a single finger touch, so we don't need anything special to handle both. Now that we know that the event was a mouse click, I check to make sure the mouse actually clicked inside the object sprite. I use this code. The second part of the condition is necessary because Godot doesn't offer an out-of-the-box way to check if the mouse cursor is inside a collision shape. I use an approximation instead, subtracting the object global position from the mouse's click position, and then comparing that to a threshold. I define the click threshold constant and set it to the width of the sprite. While I could use the actual sprite width, it's not a bad idea to use your own constant because you may want to increase it for better player field down the road. I then created a new boolean variable called isDragging and assigned it to true when this condition is met. We now have the necessary logic done for the touch portion. Afterwards, I added a placeholder in the physics process function where the dragging logic would go. Since the flick I'm using doesn't actually move the object until I release it, I don't need to do anything else. However, if you wanted to move the object while dragging, you would add that logic here. Lastly, to handle the release, we'll circle back to the input event. Since the release occurs when the mouse button is released, I added an else to the second condition. However, we don't want to use the release logic unless the is dragging flag was set previously, so I check to make sure that's true. Inside the block, I unset the is dragging and then added the logic to give motion to the object. I first get the direction of the flick by subtracting the object's position from the mouse position. To apply the velocity, I normalized the direction vector and multiplied it by a constant. Normalizing the direction vector makes its total length 1, meaning that we only care about how much of the total velocity goes in the x and y direction based on the angle. The flick power constant is a static value of 600 I set based on what felt good to me. If you run the game now, you should be able to flick the object. However, there's still one issue. If you were to click inside the object and release before moving out of the sprite's bounds, it'll go in an unpredictable direction. To fix this, I added another condition to check that the mouse cursor is outside of the sprite bounds before giving the object velocity. Here's what our final result looks like. Nice and simple. With this foundation, you could add some visual feedback to the player when they start the flick, such as adding a flick directional line. Let me know in the comments if you want to see how they implement these features, or if you have general questions. With that, thank you for watching, and have a great day.